Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Bridge coming to you here today. Um, I'm going to be making a video talking about Raw versus SmackDown. Um, not the uh, video game, but uh, definitely all the attention that um, SmackDown has been getting over the last week. Um, since last week, um, SmackDown beat Monday Night Raw in the ratings. I honestly think that Monday Night Raw on Monday was a really good show. Um, you had Goldberg showing up, you had him interacting with Kevin Owens, uh, you had a Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins, uh, basically right off of pay-per-view match. Then you had Roman Reigns going up against uh, Chris Jericho for the United States Championship. Definitely, you could tell that from Monday Night Raw's perspective, whether it fits for the creative staff or for the people that are in charge all the way at the Triple H, Stephanie and Vince McMahon, I don't want to say that the panic alarm really got hit, but WB Monday Night Raw, no matter what anybody says, is always going to be the A show. And for some reason, whether it's just they didn't really put together a good Monday Night Raw on Monday, or whether if it was um, just SmackDown put the, you know a knock out of the park, basically a pay-per-view show to make people tune in the Tuesday after Christmas. Um, to check out big matches. I mean, it was stocked from top to bottom, whether if it was, you know, AJ Styles putting the championship on the line against Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler, um, whether if it was the four away for the uh, um, tag titles, which American Alpha walked away with the victory. Um, you know, the, the, there was one thing after another after another on that show. And, um, you know, my, my friend Mike was lucky enough to go to it. I think overall, you know, SmackDown has been gaining momentum since the draft. SmackDown has to shake off the the era of the the island of misfit toys. It, it, it's always been all hands on deck for Monday Night Raw, but it's always been treated as if it is the A show, whether if it's a Triple H return, an Undertaker return, um, you know, some sort of legend coming back to be there. Those moments always went to Monday Night Raw. I can remember going to a SmackDown taping here in Sacramento, California, before the Royal Rumble 2013, and being really surprised that they put The Rock on SmackDown. I don't know if it just was the way that the schedule got drawn up, that The Rock didn't get Monday off and he can only get Tuesday, or whether you know SmackDown was um, closer to where The Rock was taping. But um, I, I felt like it was one opportunity given to SmackDown that they honestly had not gotten in a long, long time. It was, it was, a, it was a weird thing, but um, it was a fun moment. I was glad I got my money's worth when I went that night, and it was really cool about my Rock t-shirt. Just bring it. Um, can't go wrong with that. But um, I, I don't know. I think SmackDown, honestly, when you shake it down to it, um, they wanted to make it where definitely Roman Reigns, was the number one guy. They stocked it up with Seth Rollins, a good guy for him to feud with. Um, they put Brock Lesnar there, um, you know, and they split up the roster. Um, you know, the, the WWE champion at the time was Dean Ambrose. Um, he went to the SmackDown to sort of give it that rub of having the main championship there while they waited to unveil the Universal title at SummerSlam. Uh, you know, they put John Cena there to sort of balance it out, knowing that people are always going to follow what John Cena is doing since he is the main star of WWE, even if he is on the way out. And he hasn't really even been around that much. And SmackDown is still gaining momentum. I think it's more of um, SmackDown being the wrestling show that people clamor for, that people want to see. Um, when I was watching Bringing It to the Table, JBL... Um, basically was, was making the excuse that the, the reason why Raw should stay at three hours is because of the fact that they just added the cruiserweights and the cruiserweights get up to four segments a show and that makes up an hour. I've watched a lot of Raw. I've fast forwarded a lot of Raw. I've, you know, watched Raw on streams. There's no way in the world the cruiserweights are getting an hour of Monday Night Raw. They might get one featured match and they get might get one match. That's a single segment that the match is like three minutes long. But they don't really go off of what made the cruiserweights special in WCW. Normally cruiserweights 
were the first match of the night. Something to get you hooked, something to get you talking, something that made you want to pick up the phone, which I know it doesn't happen anymore because of like Facebook and Twitter, but you know, something back in the day on, on Nitro that was awesome would make you pick up your phone and call your friend and say, did you just see what fucking Rey Mysterio just did? And um, maybe that's just the way it is these days. I, I, I can make thousands of excuses. There's nights that I don't even turn on my television to watch Raw or SmackDown because I know I can go on Twitter and I can basically watch the show um, in the segments that they upload to YouTube or the, 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 the segments that they upload on the Twitter and watch the shit that I want to see that I know means something in a matter of like 15 minutes and be done with it. Um, obviously, when I think about it, um, three hours uh, on Raw, two hours on SmackDown, five hours in two nights watching television um, is a lot of time, especially when you, you have those weeks where there's pay-per-views two times a month that uh, you, you have a three-hour show on Sunday. It's just too fucking much wrestling, and I got too much other shit to do. Um, so when it comes down to it, two hours of SmackDown on Tuesday is going to win out most nights of that Monday Night Raw doesn't have a Brock Lesnar, doesn't have a Goldberg, doesn't have some sort of a return, um, some sort of a, a hook to make me join in. Um, it's just the way it is. I think that SmackDown honestly has a better roster. Um, the people that are writing it, whether that's uh, um, Ward or, or whoever else is on the creative team on SmackDown, I think honestly they're putting together a better show that people want to see, building off of what made NXT must watch television for the WWE Network back in the day. So as of right now, I think SmackDown's kicking Raw's ass and they deserve it.